it's really hard to make a game by yourself. You see, the thing is, I need to learn and do it myself for me to fully understand how difficult something is. So with a little bit of hindsight, here are the top five hardest challenges that I had to overcome and work through while building my first commercial game, Chess Survivors. And let's go ahead and start with the easiest challenges I faced and we'll move our way into the hardest challenges I faced along the way. And this first one's a bit interesting because it's the most recent challenge I had to overcome. And so I'm still kind of figuring out how to get through it. And this challenge is figuring out when to be done developing your game. For me, that's Chess Survivors. This game I've been working on for over a year and a half at this point, and it was surprisingly hard to be done with it. And that took me by surprise. I thought I would have a release date. I would be, you know, maybe a few weeks of fixing bugs, but the momentum going into the release of all the development I did kind of carried on past that. And I wanted to keep building systems. I've often heard a game is never finished. It's just released. And, and that is such a true statement. A game is never finished. It's just released. I think given enough time and thousands of hours, Chess Survivors could become an incredible game. Don't get me wrong, I'm very proud of the game it is, but I think given more time, the game could become deeper, have a lot more replayability, and have some really truly cool systems in it. And I think there's a few schools of thought on how to build games. You can go with a Dwarf Fortress mentality where you build it for over 20 years and you hammer it out, you have this vision, and you build this really, really almost cult-like loyal following. I don't trust myself to have that idea. Instead, I'd much rather go in Jonas Tyroler's idea of Thronefall where you can measure a game's development in terms of days. I think with Thronefall, they're around 200 days of building it, and that is much more what I'd rather do personally is iterate a lot quicker and then learn a lot each time and build and build and build your skills as a developer so that one day you can build enough of an opportunity, you can get a little bit lucky, and you can have a game pop off like Thronefall. So the only way I've realistically combated this is by just starting to work on a new project. I'm about two weeks into my new project and I will share more of that details as I have something to actually share and I'll give you a nice big launch video and all that fun stuff. So make sure you subscribe below if you wanna see those videos in the future. And if we go one notch harder than that, that brings us to our second challenge on the list and that is scope creep, which I think has been present for the entire game development cycle. That is when you have a little idea or somebody gives you a little idea, maybe it's a YouTube comment or a, someone in, in your Discord or a friend, or you just watch another video of a game developer doing something interesting and it sparks that idea late at night as you're just grinding away, well, maybe procrastinating away watching other YouTube game developers like myself. That's when you have that little idea and it, it, it's, it's gonna make your game so much better, but the, the evil part is it's also gonna add a bunch more time to your development cycle and hey Carl how you doing there little guy good morning hi well that's a nice that's a nice little surprise hey little buddy in many ways I've succumbed to scope creep with chess survivors but I've also been pretty good at combating it to make sure that I'm building just the core of my game and the biggest tip I have for you is to have a goal in mind with chess survivors my goal was simply to have a game on steam and figure out and learn what it takes to design, build, publish, and release a game all by yourself. So having the game on Steam makes that a success. But I think the most difficult part of scope creep is that it's gonna come in a variety of ways. It's gonna be players giving you really good feedback, calling your game great, but saying it needs more, having a fun ideas, things that might be one sentence to write out, but could be months for you to build. Having that in mind, whenever you think of adding a new feature, I always went back and thought about what is my goal. And so for me, I would think, is this something that's gonna teach me more about game development? Maybe that's gonna be flexing my design skills, maybe it's my engineering skills, but each time I would think, is this meeting my goal? And if it wasn't, I had to consider, is it worth the time it's gonna to take to develop this feature to put into my game? And having that goal as the backdrop really made that a bit easier for me. Now, those are the first two challenges that I were facing. They're kind of easier because there's slow burns that will eventually bite you if you don't stay on top of them. But the next ones are kind of things that I just, I constantly struggle with. And that is gonna be over and under engineering systems in my game. The, the, the thing about it is that I have never been trained in game development, so I don't know good architecture skills. And so as I'm building out a system, I just basically always try to build the system to work for the scope of what I'm doing now. And that 
ultimately results in me having to rework some systems and that all costs additional development time. Sometimes that's expanding a system so it works for more different for, for more use cases and things. But if you keep your scope creep low and you have a plan going into it, I think you could pretty easily figure out, hey, this is a core system. I need to make sure it has the robustness that it needs to get done. But I didn't get this right. There were a lot of systems, like this ability system is a core system. I didn't build it very well. If I accidentally leave out, uh, leave out one of these three arrays in here, my game will just hard crash. And that happened more than once and uh, if I could go back in time, I would probably do this a little bit differently. So this is one I'm really still struggling with of how to figure out how to perfectly engineer a system. And I think it's only gonna come with experience. So my biggest tip for you is really just to figure out what your core systems are gonna be and what's gonna cause you potentially the most headaches in the future, or what do you want to expand the most? And maybe you should spend an extra couple hours or days on those systems at the beginning so you can uh, get them developed well. On the other hand, there is a good argument to make about holding off over engineering until you fully have a matured game idea. Uh, the iteration phase can be really, really fun. And if you can go really quick there, you can run as fast as possible to getting to that maturity phase where you know what the game is gonna be about. And then at that time, you can go back and refactor and kind of build out some guardrails on those core systems. But you're probably gonna find most success with a blended approach and it's going to it's going to change depending on the game so your mileage definitely will vary number four here and this one's quite a doozy and that's bugs i think it is uh definitely something that took me by surprise i thought chess survivors was a simple game and so i thought making changes wouldn't be too bad but boy, were there a lot of bugs, especially at the end when I was trying to polish the game and get it ready for release. So how do you combat bugs? And I think for me as a solo developer, I can only test so much, especially as chess survivors got more and more complicated and had, and had interesting and unique interactions. And I'm hearing you, Aramis added some test cases. I'm just not gonna do that. I only have so much time as a solo developer who's now a hobbyist solo developer. And so my time is even less. I don't wanna spend it building test cases. I wanna build features. Um, so the, the, the biggest thing I've ended up doing is having a beta branch on my Steam page and then allowing players to hop onto that beta branch. I had quite a few people who would go and play, report some bugs to me and help out those builds before I finally pushed a new patch to the live version. Bugs are definitely something that I will get better at as my development and engineering and architecture skills improve. Um, but this last one is kind of a surprise because I didn't think it was going to be that hard. And that is figuring out the correct balance for my game. I don't think a game's balance will make it good. A well-balanced game does not make it a good game, but a poorly balanced game can sure make it a bad game. I found it very, very, very hard to figure out if my game is balanced. And that's mostly because as I'm playing through my game, I'm in analytical mode. I'm thinking about it from a development perspective, a design perspective. Is that a bug? Is that intended? Does that thing look right? It's so one of the things I've been lucky enough to have is people like Retromation playing my game. It's really, really emotionally challenging to watch somebody play your game, but boy, is it helpful. You're gonna see what they enjoy. You're gonna see some pain points that they don't quite understand. You're gonna see things that are broken. I think every time I've watched someone play it, I've made at least one balance tweak to the game, as well as a, a it's a ton of small little bugs that I hadn't noticed myself. A lot of players would report changes and things that they wanted to see either through the, the discussion, which I was very active on the whole time in, in discussion boards and leaving patch notes and uh, just getting that stuff put out there. And that helped people um, feel open to giving me feedback. And almost every time I took their ideas maybe tweak them a little bit, but I added them in because at the end of the day, they're the players. They're the ones who know what's fun and not fun. And I just, it, it, I find it very, very challenging to put my brain into play mode with my game. A final thought on balance is think of a game like Factorio. Look at other games and see how they do balancing. Factorio is interesting. You build a factory that ends up polluting. And so the bigger the factory, typically the more pollution you're gonna be creating. The more pollution you create, it starts to make these aliens mad. And what the aliens will end up doing is coming and attacking the polluting sources. And so 
as you build more and more of that pollution here, it'll make more and more angry enemies and eventually they'll become really, really dangerous and it becomes something you have to deal with. And so it's kind of this self-balancing thing. So if you aren't very good at building a factory or not very fast at building a factory, it'll slowly ramp up as you ramp up your factory as well. This kind of player progression driven balance is pretty useful in a very, very um, elegant solution. So just consider looking at other games and, and learn how do they do their balancing. I'd love to know what you think down in the comments. I've had some great conversations in my recent videos with you all. I appreciate the support and feedback, uh, but, but good luck out there. I think given enough time, you, you, you too will get your game released and uh, you'll be blown away by how much you've learned along the way. I've been Aramis. Thank you so much for watching.